And go where you're going well, only did it once. Oh, to. You made okay, just you before it. Made I'm oh. sorry, sometimes I feel less than useless at these sessions. I really do. In 1965, the Beatles had achieved everything a pop star could dream of. She Loves You became the best-selling single in the history of British records. They opened the way for the United States for the British invasion. They were breaking records everywhere. The rating levels in The Ed Sullivan Show were unprecedented. Every single they released was number one. Tours in the most important countries for the industry, two successful movies, and members of the British Empire. What else could they do? They had broken all the standards, and avoiding a comfort zone, the Beatles decided to evolve and mature to change the history of music and the whole world. Rubber Soul was the beginning of everything. Michelle, take one. <coughs> yeah. Okay, start again. In 1965, the Beatles began to see the ravages of fame. From the working class of Liverpool, they became icons of the time. The world was changing, and their music was dominating the radio. The band began to feel the pressure and complexities of being who they were. John Lennon described it as the golden cage. They were physically and emotionally drained. Marijuana, introduced by Bob Dylan, and LSD by a dentist, were previous experiences that led the band to different thoughts. After their touring activity, the Beatles had a break. On October 26, 1965, they received the order from the British Empire. It was interpreted as a move by the Queen to capitalize on the approval and backing of young people. December was just around the corner, and EMI demanded new songs before Christmas. So with no other options, the Beatles had to get to work to deliver the new album on time and be available for a short British tour to close the year. The challenge was simple. They had a few weeks to record the songs and give George Martin and his team enough space to mix the songs quickly. But unlike their past albums, the songs were more complex and interesting this time. Far from the distractions of movies or scandals, the Beatles began work on the album on October 12th. The teenage lyrics were gone. The sound was fresh and new. The Beatles were using the studio as an instrument for the first time. Technically and musically, everything was different, and the band was ready to record the best album of their career. Of course, until that moment. The album opens with Drive My Car. The lyrics of this track are nothing more than a sexual euphemism. The narrator of the story tells of a woman who wants to become a famous movie star, and she offers him the opportunity to be her chauffeur, adding, and maybe I'll love you. Also, Paul McCartney described the song as a comedy number for Melody Maker magazine. At first, the original lyrics didn't like Paul very much. Lennon dismissed the lyrics as garbage and too soft. They decided to rewrite the lyrics, and after some difficulty, came up with the phrase, drive my car. The rest of the lyrics flowed easily from that point. The second track, just like the first one, tells a story from beginning to end. It talks about a woman who, just as she escapes the standards of the traditional woman of the time, it talks about a liberal woman. It presents a theme of antagonistic relationship in a couple, a darker side of romance. This song actually speaks of John Lennon's adultery with a woman, probably his neighbor and friend, Sonny Freeman. The oriental instrumentation and the quirkiness of the lyrics was one of the first indications to fans that the Beatles were expanding their musical vocabulary and were rapidly adopting an experimental approach. This song departs from previous stories and returns a bit to what the Beatles had been doing lyrically, inspired by the Four Tops. McCartney wrote a sophisticated melody full of colorful nuances, emphasizing the strength of the vocal harmonies. Up to this point, it was the longest song recorded by the band. Textually, the egomaniacal protagonist boasts of his self-sufficiency and disdainfully addresses his partner as the antithesis of the heroines of the previous tracks, a reflection of his already complicated relationship with Jane Asher. He's a real nowhere man. Plunged in a small existential crisis due to his fame, John Lennon composed Nowhere Man, trying to find the meaning of his life. Defying the stereotypes of the pop songs of the time, he created personal lyrics that left behind the teenage songs composed by him. It is the portrait of a lonely and incapable man. Nowhere Man poses an intimate reflection to a depressed man tired of his life and marriage. Harrison's first track on the album. The song talks about lies, being one of the band's first compositions that was not a love song, unlike the misconception that it was dedicated to his then-girlfriend Patty Boyd. Later in his book, I, Me, Mine, Harrison said, I don't remember who I had dedicated the song to, but it was probably to the government. On the bass, Paul McCartney plays a fuzz effect for the first time using his new Rickenbacker 4001, and the technique in the guitar sound was inspired by the Rolling Stones song, Satisfaction. 
The Word is one of Lenin's first songs dealing with politics, although references of this kind are obscured by references to love. Musically, George Martin played harmonium. The song is based on a few notes with a few changes, and a simple melody in D major. Paul McCartney said of this song, Me and John like to do one-note songs like Long Tall Sally. We came close to that with The Word. The origins of Michelle are somewhat unclear. The tune wasn't exactly new, and had been around since the days of the quarrymen. It all started as a parody by Paul of certain French songs he had heard at a party. When he finally put lyrics to it, encouraged by John, he decided that it should have some real French in it. He relied on his friend Ivan Vaughn's wife to translate some phrases. In the middle of the song, McCartney couldn't find his way, and John Lennon, inspired by Nina Simone's songs, added the I love you part. I love you, I love you, I love you. Ringo had his turn on the album with this song. Here, the lyrical contribution was minimal. The original version was written by John Lennon in his Quarrymen period, and was intended to appear on some album or single after the release of Please Please Me, but was saved until 1965. Ringo contributed his ideas for the recording. They had fun recording it. The song only required one take, and the improvisation and the spontaneity of the song is evident in the way it was recorded. Is there anybody going to listen to my story? It is known that Lennon and McCartney in these times began to compete. They stopped composing together at some points, and each began to work on their own. Girl is an answer to Michelle in songwriting quality. Although it has the feel of a beautiful melody, it's actually an anguished song. The chorus sounds like the Beach Boys, who praise the Beatles, and the final guitar part was composed by Paul McCartney in Greece. The sharp intake of breath during the chorus was either an approximation of lascivious heavy breathing or a non-too-subtle reference to marijuana smoking. Another track for Jane Asher. McCartney again portrays their relationship problems. You don't look different, but you've changed, says the lyrics, reflecting his dissatisfaction with the relationship. The album's masterpiece. According to Lennon, the origins of the song can be found when English journalist Kenneth Alsop made an observation that Lennon should write songs about his childhood. The original version of the lyrics were based on a bus route he took in Liverpool, naming various places he saw along the way, including Penny Lane and Strawberry Field. However, Lennon felt it was ridiculous to call it the most boring version of the bus ride I took on my vacation. He reworked the lyrics, replacing specific memories with a generalized meditation on his past. The music was finished with Paul McCartney and George Martin playing the keyboard solos. Years later, the song caused disagreements between John and Paul over the song's authorship. It's been a long time. Wait was recorded for help, and they were not happy with the result. George Martin suggested rescuing it and putting it on Rubber Soul. It is a simple song that almost never appears on any album. George and Paul were invited to a session of The Birds, and it was there that Harrison was inspired by the sound of the song. Listen to this song by The Birds. Harrison achieved a combination of folk with rock. Although it is certainly a pretty simple song, you can already hear George's personal touch that will be characteristic in later songs. The last track of the album was the first to be recorded, a country number with controversial lyrics. George Martin had hoped to drop it from the album if they could get one more track, but in the end, it was not possible. Lennon said this was his least favorite Beatles song in a 1973 interview, and later said this song was the song he hated the most to have written. The album was released on December 3rd of 1965, simultaneously with a new single, Day Tripper and We Can Work It Out, which were recorded during the sessions of the album. And EMI thought that releasing the single and the album on the same day would help to simultaneously give promotion to each other. Immediately, the album and single went to the top, number one for both, a resounding success for the Christmas season. In the United States, the success was similar, but the album was not the same. The American record company had been modifying the original track list for years and the American version of Rubber Soul seemed more like a folk rock album with the modifications. The Beatles pressured Brian Epstein so that in the United States, they would respect the artistic over the commercial. In America, even though they did not have the Beatles in their complete conception, the album had a million sales in advance, so it did not have to go to number one in that country. It came out being at number one anyway. Rubber Soul was received positively by critics and is often cited as one of the band's best works. Rolling Stone said the band's talent kept expanding and began to demand other artistic realms. 
The album was the most important artistic leap in the Beatles' career, and media cited it as the moment when the group marked a move away from Beatlemania and the heavy demands of teen pop and towards more introspection and adult themes. The photo on the album cover appears somewhat elongated. The photographer, Robert Freeman, had taken some photos of the band around Lennon's house. He showed them to the band projected on a poster board to simulate how it would look on the album cover. And at that moment, part of the poster board was tilted back, causing the image to reshape and elongate. Excited by the effect, the band asked to have it that way. The letters that gave the title to the album were designed by Charles Front. When the cover was about to be printed, they realized they had forgotten to put the name of the band on the album. All the previous albums had included the word Beatles. But this time, the label decided to take the risk. In fact, it was not necessary to put the name of the group. They were the most recognizable musicians on the planet. The title of the album was conceived by McCartney. It was strange for everyone because the title was not in any song. They were looking for a hidden message. The reality is that it had only emerged by chance after finishing the first take of I'm Down, recorded five and a half months ago. McCartney is heard talking about a review in a magazine to Mick Jagger, in which they defined his way of singing as plastic soul. And under that fact, the Beatles, in an ironic way, baptized the album. It's a play on words. Plastic soul, man, plastic soul. The first time Brian Wilson listened to Rubber Soul, he was stunned. He repeated it four times and could not sleep during the night. At that moment, he discovered that the music had changed. And from this fact, the album, Pet Sounds, was born. On November 4th, the Beatles recorded an instrumental track called 12 Bar Original, published for the first time on Volume 2 of the anthology. And during another session, the band also took the opportunity to record their traditional Christmas recording that they sent to their fan club. When the famous Beatles video game Rock Band released its complimentary content, Rubber Soul, along with Sgt. Pepper's and Abbey Road, were the only albums that could be played in full in the video game. In different lists over the years, Rubber Soul has been considered one of the best albums in the history of music. I love you. If we had to divide the Beatles' career in two, this would undoubtedly be their second birth. Here was born a change in the way music was made. Then came Revolver and Sgt. Pepper's. The Beatles evolved as artists. And this was the first album in which the Beatles were in complete creative control during the recording, with enough studio time to develop and perfect new sound ideas. Nearly 60 years after its release, Rubber Soul still sounds fresh. Thanks for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. This is Music Box. But that chord, play that, that's otherwise.